Hello and welcome to The Daily Space. My iPad chose that very moment to become too faint for me to see, so we're going to do that again. All right, let's let's try let's try this again. Hello and welcome to The Daily Space for today, Friday, March 6th. 2020. I'm your host, Dr. Pamela Gay, and I am here to put science in your brain. Now, we are currently working in a new studio with a slightly new layout of everything, so I hope that um, we got everything right. But if we didn't, please let us know in the comments and the chat, and we'll work to improve the quality as we go. But for now, things hopefully look better and not worse. Now, it's Friday. I just want to start this episode off with a reminder that we will be taking next week off to work on planning how to bring you all the news that would have been coming out during the Lunar and Planetary Sciences Conference, but is now in limbo as coronavirus has canceled that meeting and so many others. Folks, it's a world, weird, weird world out there. Stock up on food and chocolate and wash your hands. I think everyone is a bit distracted at the moment, and there hasn't been a lot of super exciting news. The most scientifically interesting thing today is the discovery of an active galaxy with massive jets that happen to be pointed right at us. Now, while that may sound dangerous, this particular object, a blazar named PSO J0309474049 plus 2717575.31, yes, that's its name, is located in the distant universe, and its light has been traveling toward us for some 12 billion years. These kinds of galaxies can only be detected when their jets are pointed in our direction, and they are harmless. Now, statistically, if we find one blazer like this, there's going to be a hundred more that just happen to be pointed in other directions that we can't detect. This discovery implies there are a bunch of active galaxies already large and churning out star formation just one billion years after the universe formed. This object is the most distant source of persistent radio emission so far found. These results are published in the latest issue of Astronomy and Astrophysics, and this work was led by Silvia Bellidita. Now, you'll often hear us talk about how our stories come from a new article in one journal or another, and we work hard to make sure that we are either putting forward peer-reviewed science or highlighting an event or pretty picture that may be of interest, but doesn't make scientific claims that need to be reviewed through the peer review process. This week, we've had a whole bunch of people ask us about claims that a protein has been found in a meteor. We've seen reports of this on Twitter, but Twitter isn't exactly a credible source of information, at least not all the time. In trying to hunt down the original research, we found a preprint, a paper that is not yet published and is undergoing review. A team of researchers led by Malcolm McLaughlin, who lists his affiliation as Plex LLC, but who isn't listed on their website and may actually be retired um, or something, I don't know. Um, Well, they have the paper posted on the internet. Given the lack of peer review on this paper and its extraordinary claims, and also my inability to find out anything about the first author, we're going to hold off talking about this science until the papers made it through peer review. This science is outside my area of expertise, and this is a case where I can't easily say I know this research team, so I'm going to give you a preview. This isn't to say the research is bad or less likely to be true. It's to say I have no idea, and science is a process, and part of that process is peer review. Let's wait for the process to take place, and then, then we will cover this story in detail. Okay, it's a short news day, and we have one final news note for the day. Yesterday, NASA announced that the Mars 2020 rover is going to be dubbed Perseverance. Perseverance. 
The winning essay associated with his name was written by Alexander Mather of Virginia and was one of 28,000 essays submitted. People on Twitter were quick to complain that this name is a bear to spell, and I'll admit I misspelled it more than once in putting together this episode. Um, yeah, it's already looking like folks may be shortening Perseverance to Percy. Now, don't like Perseverance or Percy? Well, Doug Ellison at JPL pointed out on Twitter that Mars Science Laboratory, its team refers to the so-called Curiosity rover as the rover, or when it's being annoying as the spacecraft. So here's to the other rover launching in 2020 that some call Percy, having a successful launch later this year. And that rounds out our show for today. I will now hang around and answer your questions. Now, while you type them in, I'm going to go ahead and remind you, please precede your questions with the purple circle, with the purple star in the center if you're watching us live right here on twitch.tv. For those of you watching this on YouTube, welcome. And if you want to catch the show live, tune in to twitch.tv slash CosmoQuestX at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Um, we're about to have a I have no idea when that is anywhere else in the world as we slowly uh, put into place daylight savings time. So, yeah, let's go with 1 p.m. Eastern, folks. 1 p.m. Eastern. We are a production of the Planetary Science Institute, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to exploring our solar system and beyond. We are produced by Susie Murph, and today's episode was written by me. So we're here thanks to you, and we could really use your help keeping this show going. There's lots of different things you can do to help. You can write a review wherever you find podcasts. You can share links out on Twitter, Facebook, or the social media of your choice, or just like email and word of mouth. And we're here because of your generous support your bits, your subs, and your patronage over on patreon.com all allow us to do more than we could do any other way. So thank you for everything you do. We hope we can continue bringing you the science day after day, but not next week because we're planning awesome sauce for the week after. All right, so let's see what questions you have. Um, so... IOP77 asks, what will be the first image captured by JWST? It will launch. I hope you're right that it launches, and we don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, they keep putting out calls for proposals for JWST for people to pitch what they'd like to image with it. Um, but as the launch gets delayed, astronomers are finding ways to do all of J, not all, to do some of JWST science using other instruments, other telescopes, other methods. So exactly what we most need JWST to look at, well, that's going to depend on when it launches. So we probably won't know what its first image is going to be until we're looking at it. Hopefully we'll still be here to bring you that image. When, and I'm going to go with if, JWST successfully gets to work. All right, let's see what other questions there are. I'm going to scroll all the way up to the top. Um, let's see. <laughs> D DPI 209 says, has been washing and sanitizing his hands a lot lately. Don't forget to use lotion or you're going to destroy your skin. Um, soap and water is actually quite good if you have access to soap and water because the virus is wrapped up in a um, lipid barrier that soap will generally break down. So you can do just as good a job if you like do the whole 20 minute, not 20 minute, 20 second um, correct method of washing. And that's a little less har harmful to the skin. Um, as always, Dawn dish soap is kind of amazing for stuff like this. That's why they can use it on uh, animals after oil spills. All right, let's see what else is in here. Um, it's a weekend, so great. I hope likewise DPI puts in. Um, I agree, I agree. Let's see. Let's 
looking for questions. <laughs> Check your cab rates. Perseverance rescinded. New name, Murray. I like Murray. Murray is a good name. Um, Wayne puts in, I'm hoping the weather is good so I can do some work on my observatory. It is true. It is getting to be the season when observing doesn't hurt. Um, it's not cold. It's not gross. It's spring. All right. Looking for more questions. <laughs> so Larry is like, if you say per sever ants, you can spell it easy. Um, so yeah, you say that, but I keep trying to replace that A with an E and that doesn't work. Um, that's just what my fingers want to do. All right. Um, Larry asks, has the paper for the D-Star Hexaquirk been peer reviewed yet? N I, I haven't had a chance to look. I'm sorry. I got distracted. Um, so IUP77 says, your thoughts on the new paper proposing to use supernova to propel spacecraft. I haven't seen it, so I can't say anything. Um, drop a link over in our Discord. Uh, Kerbal says, but there's not that many interesting things to look at right now. It's true, but you can gear up and practice for the upcoming uh, um, Messier Marathon time of the year. Um, you can still catch Andromeda early in the evening. Crab Nebula is up. And there's globular clusters and open clusters galore. But it's true. It's, it's not the better time of year. Uh, <laughs> okay, Larry, you just gave us all a brain worm. Um, Hanny, I'm not sure what you mean by is that curiosity or perseverance? Um, people are proposing in the chat that perseverance be renamed Murray. And I like that. Um, <laughs> Okay, um, yes, Venus is big and bright right now. That's entirely true. Oh, in the picture, that is Mars 2020, which it's just an artist's illustration of what Mars 2020 should look like. And uh, I guess this is Percy that we're looking at, or Murray, but no one else will understand what we're talking about. So I'm going to call it Percy. Um. No, it's not Arizona. It's literally just an artist's illustration. They don't generally take the four launch spacecraft out into the desert. They have prototypes that aren't as pretty that they use for that. Um, but this has clearly been airbrushed to make it as pretty as possible. Um, <laughs> I like the way Trekker Kev is like, nope, Stargate SG-1. I wish we had Stargates. Ah. Uh, and I think you mean the Murray reference is SG-1. And yes, Stargate SG-1 did have Murray as a name. And it's excellent. That is yes. Just yes. All right. Are there any actual questions? Because currently we are babbling, which I appreciate. But today in an hour and 45 minutes, we're recording um, Astronomy Cast brain. Brains sometimes fall out and roll across the dusty floor. Uh, in an hour and 45 minutes, we're going to be recording Astronomy Cast. Today's topic is going to be Katherine Johnson, the mathematician who helped calculate orbits that got early humans to orbit and all the way to the moon. We're going to be celebrating her life and um, talking to you afterwards about, well, whatever happens to come up during Q&A. We will be doing a simulcast right here on twitch.tv. And um, tonight at 11.50 Eastern, there is a Falcon 9 launch scheduled. And we are planning to bring that to you. I think I'll probably be hosting. Um, let's see. Uh, so Henny is asking, will it be far away from Curiosity? Yes, but I don't remember exactly where. So for those of you who haven't been around very long, 
Um, spacecraft are dead to me until they are like successfully launched. I don't trust spacecraft to function. If you do that, you get your heart broken. And in my case, your doctoral dissertation mucked with when the spacecraft you're counting on for your research fails to operate on launch. I've been scarred. Thus, I, I generally know that there are spacecraft up and coming. Like, I know Europa, Europa Clipper is a thing and that it's currently slated to launch on a Space Launch Systems rocket. And if it can't, is going to have to take the long route on a different rocket. Uh, so, so the details, though, I often don't keep track of until right up to launch. And sometimes I ignore them until after they've launched. That's me. Um, okay, let's see. The sarcastic rover Twitter account has already warned off M2020, don't touch my stuff. That's fair. That is fair. Um, there are waffles and tardi in the chat. I'm going to go with Tardi is the plural of Tardis. I like waffles too. All right. So we have totally gone down the rabbit hole. I am going to say um, that is it for today. This has been The Daily Space. I have been your host, Dr. Pamela Gay, and I was author of today's episode, which will be produced by the ever fabulous Susie Murph. We are a production of the Planetary Science Institute, a 501c3 nonprofit dedicated to exploring our solar system and beyond. We are here thanks to the generous contributions of people like you. Please, if you can, consider giving your bits, your subs, and your patronage more than anything else over at patreon.com slash CosmoQuestX. You're what keep us going. So we are taking next week off. But I will see you on the other side and wherever you are. Have a fabulous morning, evening, or afternoon. And wash your hands. <laughs> Bye-bye.